And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Talisman Legendary Tales. Now, I was a little loath to review this, or even play it, because the original Talisman, which has been out for many years, and a lot of people love it, I hate it. Like, I hate Talisman. However, I was told that this was a fairly different game, and it is. Talisman is a game in which you roll dice, move around, fight monsters, and eventually someone wins after a really, really, really long, boring time. Talisman Legendary Tales is a cooperative game. Definitely, the box is not so clear. It says the cooperative family game is definitely geared towards kids. It's a simple, very simple game where you're working together to go through different missions. It has some similarities to Talisman, but not too many, thankfully. Here's how it plays. Each player is going to take a hero, so you might want to be the warrior, and you'll take a bag that's connected with that warrior. These stats here that are attached to the bag tell you what's inside your bag. It also tells you a special ability that you have, but you have a bunch of tokens that are in your bag that match your character. You'll take a standee for your character, and there are two standees for each character, so you pick whichever one that you would like to use and everyone's going to start in a certain location. You're going to set up these different adventures. There are several adventures that come with the game, like the first one is the Curse of the Fairies. I have one just set up here. I want to show, I don't know, I just picked this one, the Hunt for the Dragon. So you'll take this board here. You're gonna put a timer token on it based on how many stars you would like to get for accomplishing the quest. The more stars, the shorter time that you'll have. It tells you any special abilities. Once you complete whatever the goal is, you'll flip it over, and then there's a second thing, a second goal that's going to happen to defeat it. The book itself, you'll go through the book of adventures. It will tell you some more rules. It will tell you how to set up. You can see I set it up here, and where to put the tokens, and there might be some special rules. And then players are going to take turns. On a player's turn, you will roll the die, and that is how far you can move. When you move, you'll turn over a token, and there might be an enemy or an encounter that you have to fight. Here we have a fire salamander, which needs a sword to defeat it. So that is the dwarf bag. So I'll grab her bag here, and you'll pull three tokens from your bag. So let's see if we get lucky enough to get... All we need to do is get a sword icon. All right, we got a sword icon. That frog shouldn't be in the bag. A sword icon, and we also move the time token. So pulling these icons from the bag can cause you to have time token, but it also lets me draw another token. Sometimes the tokens will let you draw stuff from someone else's bag. Uh, there's also magic tokens. Some are just time. Those aren't necessarily good because if you run out of time, you'll lose the game. Once you beat a enemy, then you get to pull from the loot bag. And in here, you'll be getting all sorts of different tokens. See, this is magic and draw another token. Uh, let's take a look at some of these. Here you actually go back one time. This is magic and attack, a double attack. Sometimes they let you pull from someone else's bag. And when you get one of these, you don't have to put it in your own bag. You can put it in another player's bag since the game is fully cooperative. And that's it. You're going to win this area together or you're going to run out of time units. They'll get to here and then you lose. You can save scenarios from game to game. In the box itself, here's all the different tokens. You have these things here where you'll be able to keep track of different levels and things like that. But most of these are not very long scenarios. It's very easy to finish them in one setting. And you're going to win or lose together. And then, like in this one, I think you're supposed to find the dragon. Where did I put him? Here, you got to defeat this guy a few times to beat him. He's not too terribly difficult um, to beat. And that's it. And then you go on to the next scenario. There's five scenarios, five adventures. And if you beat all of them, you've beaten the game. Although you could play each scenario over and over if you want. The components for this game are okay. I don't mind the, the bags. The bags are huge bags, by the way. And I really... I especially like the fact that they have two different artwork for each of the characters. That's a nice addition to the game, and it just allows you 
I mean, these are really well done art, and it shows different cool characters. I like that it shows you what's in the bag. I like the fact that the characters have different special abilities. These I'm less impressed with. They're nice big tiles, right? But there's all this green on them. I, I don't know. They just don't feel different at all. They really aren't different. Except there are some pictures and things on them. There's a little bit of deductiveness of the game. I won't spoil it for you, but there was some cool things that I found looking into it. The tokens themselves are fine, although you can see mine are not cut exactly right. They're a little off on their cut, but that's not a huge thing. The standees are great, but I don't, I mean the pit, the art, but I don't like this cardboard standee thing. These fall over too easily. So overall, it's kind of a mixed bag components, but I'll say better good than not, especially with how bag, big these bags are, because they're not hard to pull the tokens out of. Alrighty, so there you go. I am ranking this as a kid's game. Uh, again, it's a family game, and I've played this with some adults, but it's really simple. You're pulling discs from a bag, and it's there's luck in rolling the die. The die has on it a uh, one, two, two, three, a four, but the four has a time token, so it moves a time marker, and then a portal, which lets you go anywhere. Well, that's kind of just lucky. Pulling the things from a bag, there's definitely work and strategy that goes into that, like, okay, you have a lot of attack, you have magic, this person takes two magic, you should go fight them. Here, you need some more regular attack in your bag, so I'm gonna give you this token. It encourages teamwork, and it's great for kids in that regard. I like them working together. The map is kind of a little blurry, like, what am I going, why? Ooh, the castle. Does the castle matter? Probably not, but the stories are good. I do enjoy this. I mean, there's a lot of text on these. You've discovered that the last talisman, that's what you're looking for, talismans, has been taken by a dark lord who hides in a remote region in the mountains. With a feeling of unease, you set out to find him. It's not scary, it's not over the top, it's not gory, it's like light, hearted fun fantasy for kids think a little bit lighter than dragon lance and so for that matter i think it's good the whole bag pulling i like that i like getting new equipment to throw in the bags everyone's always excited when they get something different and unusual and the scenarios have this whole go find something and then defeat it or bring it back to this spot and that's going to be luck as to where it is and but that gives the scenarios replayability you can play the same scenarios over again i know some people might be worried like once you're done with five is it boring for adults, sure, but for kids, I could see them going through and playing the same adventure again, trying to get a better score, trying to play it on heroic, trying it with a different group of characters. So with all that in mind, I like it a lot. Not one that I would play on my own, but with kids, I enjoyed it. Talisman, Legendary Tales, so much better than Talisman. Dice Tower Judgment, kid approved.